Hey everyone, Andrea here over at SoSpire. I just wanted to give you a look at the bags. This is the prototype of the Happy Go Lucky bag. And this is the new exterior, which we are assembling today at 12 o'clock Eastern. They are similar, but different. I really like them. It'll be hard for me to choose which one is my favorite. Hope to see you then. Hi everyone, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com. Welcome back to our January Sew Together. If you are just joining us, we are making this awesome convertible backpack, which you could easily use as a messenger bag or as a backpack. And so today we are working on constructing the exterior of this project. You will want to review week one in which I go over all the pattern measurements and the required materials if you have not yet already done so. At the end of each segment, I am assigning a little homework. So last week's homework was to craft the exterior panels and that involved cutting out 88 four inch squares. And I have my panels prepped here, which I'm going to show you when we start sewing the exterior today. In week one, I demonstrated my personal piecing technique. And then one of my dear friends, Barbara, who is a longtime Sewspire patron and an avid quilter, mentioned to me that the machine foot that I'm using is actually three eighths of an inch. So when I recommended that you line that material up with the right hand side of your foot, you would net a three eighths of an inch seam allowance, which is perfectly fine for this bag. The quarter inch seam allowance is kind of the quilter's golden rule. So if you went with true quarter inch, excellent. If you used my method and you netted three eighths of an inch, excellent. For this project, the big thing is consistency. I have been loving your homework updates on the SoSpire Facebook community. I'll link to that down in the notes. That's a great place for you to post updates and really share any of your SoSpire projects or SoSpire related questions. So today I am going to demo a brand new pocket technique. If you have ever created a messenger bag or used a messenger bag that has snap closures on the flap, you know how difficult that can be to close if you are in a hurry. And so what I've done is integrate a little lip here on the pocket that allows the user to slip their fingers underneath the base of that pocket and open and close the bag with Ease. So I'm going to demonstrate how you would create that feature on your pockets today. And then I'm going to show you how to use my SoSpire T method to construct the exterior of this bag. And then I'm going to assign you homework for week three of our January Sew Together. Okay, so as promised, I have my patchwork panels here to show you. Before we take a look at these, I want to mention to you that I do have a PDF for this project, which includes all of the pattern measurements, the material requirements, as well as the order of operations that we are going to construct this bag in. I will be screen sharing that with you as well. So you have the option of taking notes or capturing the screen and working directly from that. 
by purchasing the PDF, you are directly supporting the channel and my future content. So I am so grateful to those of you that will be working from that supplemental PDF. You'll find that for sale in my Etsy pattern shop, and I will link to that down in the notes for you as well. So in week one, I showed you how I incorporated this little fussy cut fox, and this is going to be my exterior flap that's crafted from the three by four, so 12 of the four inch squares. And then if you wanted to do the math and measure, you could fussy cut an accent for your flap panel as well. And then I have put together my two side panels and my base panel. I will probably go for these darker colors on the base and these will be my side panels. And those are each four of the four inch squares. And I have, oh, that's Timmy, go lay down Tim. And I have backed that with a like sized piece of the Annie Soft and Stable. And then I have come across there with some top stitching. You can quilt this panel any way that you like, but I just put in the three rows of top stitching near the seams there to tack that to the foam. So that's how you're going to prep your two side and base panels. And then you should have four of the four by four panels. Two will become the exterior body panels and two will be crafted into exterior pockets. And so I have fussy cut another one of those foxes there. So this is going to become a pocket, which I will craft with you today because if I turned it into an exterior panel, the pocket would hide my fox. So the little fox is going to be on the exterior pocket and on the flap and she will be super duper cute. I think I will probably put her on the back of the bag and then the flap, she will show up on the front of the bag, but we will make that decision when we get to that part of the bag. So two of these 16 square panels are going to need a like size piece of the Annie's Soft and Stable. And that's what I have done here. This would be my front and my rear exterior body panels. And I have backed those with like size piece of the Annie Soft and Stable. You can use quilt batting or fusible fleece. Um, for that matter, any other interfacing of choice is fine as long as your machine can handle it and it will offer you the stability that you desire and the um, padding that you need for the contents. So I love working with the Annie Soft and Stable because it adds that little bit of protection. It's a breeze to sew with. It adds body without weight. So again, lay your 16 square panels that will be your front and your rear on a piece of the Annie's and quilt those as desired. I just did the three rows, very simple for those panels. So I wanted to show you what the pocket looks like when it's finished. This is going to be the one that is on the front exterior and so I have pre-installed my snaps. I will come back to that and explain to you where to position those, but I wanted to let you know what was happening here. So right now we are going to craft two pockets which have the facing on the back, the Annie's in the center, and then the patchwork on the front. Initially, the two pockets will be identical, and then we will customize them to suit their individual purposes. 
So select your 16 square panel, which is four rows of four, four inch squares that you would like to use on your pockets. You'll have two of those. My first one is already pre-crafted, so I'm working here with my second one. If there is a clear uh, top, which mine does have a clear top, this will be the top of the pocket because I don't want my fox upside down. Uh, make note of that and then take your facing panel, which is eight and a half by 14. All the measurements are included in that PDF, which you see here on the screen and have the option of purchasing. Um, it's worth noting that SoSpire patrons receive a complimentary copy of every PDF I create. So that's one of the perks of joining that awesome community. There's additional info down in the notes if you'd like to hang out with us over there. We would love to have you. So you're gonna take your eight and a half by 14 inch pocket facing and position that right sides facing along the top of your patchwork pocket. And then you're gonna run a row of stitching across there to join that. You can go ahead and use three eighths of an inch seam allowance to do that. And I am working on the brand new Janome Skyline S three today. One lucky SoSpire subscriber will win this beautiful machine if we reach 106,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. Share the channel with your friends and family who might enjoy learning how to sew bags that wow. something that looks like this and now what you want to do is give that a good press and then fold that panel right in half so align that bottom edge and so you should end up with um, one row of squares along the back of that pocket and then the top of the pocket should be nice and even so you have a three square pocket front Again, you're gonna wanna press this well and then cut yourself a like size piece of your Annie's soft and stable or your quilt padding or your fusible fleece is also a wonderful option for this project. And then you're going to take that like size piece of Annie's and fit that right in between the layers there and if you need to you can press again And then once you're confident everything is even and smooth, go ahead and run a row of top stitching across the top, add a second row for accent, and then two more rows of top stitching just to secure that foam to this pocket. Okay, I have my pocket all prepped and in total you're going to need two of these quilted 
pockets. I have mine right here. You can see how colorful this bag is going to be. Now on one of these, you're going to need to install your snaps. They can be magnetic or heavy duty snaps. You're going to want to come to the top interior corner of that bottom square. Okay, that's one of the benefits of using these four inch squares is it makes installing these snaps a cinch. If you are using whole cloth, that is going to be three and a half inches up from the base and three and a half inches in from the edge there. So two snaps right there. This exterior pocket is undivided and full length exterior pocket, no closures on that. So it's fine just how it is. Then you're going to want to bring over your exterior panel that is going to be on the rear of the bag and position that full length pocket on there and that's just going to sit nice and flush but you see how I have that duplicate fabric there so I don't like that look but I love these strawberries so I'm trying to keep them in the mix so I'm going to switch out these panels here and this is going to be my front so we will work with that in just a second and then i'm going to bring over my remaining panel and pick the fabrics that i'd like peeping up and i think i really like this collection there and that does not work for me either darn okay let's see how this looks and that's kind of weird too. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with this look here because it's kind of okay because they're both aligned there and it works with this fox being the same fabric. So that's kind of an interesting look. And this is on the back of the bag as well. So I think I'm going to stick with that just like it is right there because I like those colors. So you want the bottom edge of the pocket aligned with the base of this panel. And you can go ahead and tack this pocket down right at the top right and left corners of that pocket. Go ahead and back stitch to reinforce. this full length padded pocket across the back. The next thing that I need to do to this rear panel is install the strap tabs. So in my prototype, I use the triangle rings at the bottom. You can also use O-rings, which are, I think, more accessible to most. And then I installed a rivet there to keep that O-ring from slipping down. You could run a row of stitching in place of that. And you're going to need two of these tabs, which are going to be positioned at the base of the bag, approximately three inches in from the right hand side. And so I'm going to go ahead and tack this one down with some back stitching, and then I'm going to show you how to craft that strap tab and install and install the rivet.
Okay, so I have my first strap tab in place. If you are not going to use this bag as a backpack, you do not need these. All right, so in the PDF, the strap tabs are specified as six by six inch cuts of fabric. That works beautifully with the one and a half inch hardware. So if you, if you are using the triangle rings, you're going to want to cut yours six by six, and that's an awesome fit. For these O-rings, I had to reduce the size of mine to five by six and that netted me a better fitting strap. So please customize this piece of fabric to fit your hardware. So we use the standard Sew Spire strap method, fold that in half and press, and then bring those open edges inward to meet on the center press line, fold that over again, and you have a nice sturdy four ply strap. Then you're gonna stitch down the open edge and the opposite edge to create that strap. Once you have your strap stitched, you can thread on your hardware and get that ring on there nice and even, and then run a row of stitching across the raw edges. And then if you are using a rivet, you're going to install that approximately an inch down from the top. If you are going to stitch, same, just stitch right across there, approximately an inch from the top. Go ahead and back stitch to reinforce that. I am going to bring over my cam press and show you all how to install a rivet with this. I really love this tool. I got this at the end of 2021 and I am having a blast learning how to use it. So the first thing that you need to do is to mark where you would like to install your rivet. And I have these handy dandy polka dots that are right where I want to install it. So you will use the hole punch and poke a hole in that fabric and it goes right through no problem and then you're going to need to switch out the dies and you do have to order the dies separately or purchase their kit along with purchasing the cam press i have an unboxing video that's unlisted which i can share with you all if you're curious about what came with my kit and how much it cost. Okay, and then I am using eight millimeter rivets for this, which I found these awesome little containers at the Michaels and they sort all my goodies for my press and so eight millimeter rivets come with the post and a cap You just put the post through the holes 
and then that cap snaps right on there. And it's fairly secure right now, but you can see it wiggles in between. So you just position that up on the press and squish that down. And now your rivet is flush with the fabric and your o-ring will not slide up and down that strap plus it just adds a nice little accent to this otherwise standard strap okay so now i'm going to bring back over my exterior rear panel which is the body panel and the padded pocket and i'm going to position that second strap tab three inches in from that side. I do want to make sure that these tabs are even and that I have a little bit of extra hanging over the base. Then I'm going to fit that up on the machine and stitch through all those layers to tack that tab down. Okay, I have now my rear panel all prepped. The next thing for me to do is to prep my front panel. Just to review, I have my exterior front panel here, and then I have my exterior front pocket with the magnetic snaps installed in the top left and right hand corners of that first bottom block. All right, and I have that pocket laying right now on top of that panel level with the base. But we're gonna turn that pocket upside down so it is near the base and position that so it is three inches up from the base. So what is the bottom of that pocket is now three inches up from the base. And we're gonna stitch right across there. Very narrow, uh, three eighths of an inch should be fine. And you may wanna go ahead and clip that so that it does not shift on you. You definitely want this line to be straight. Okay, so now I have my pocket attached upside down on the exterior front panel. And what I want to do is flip that pocket up. And some of you may know this as a French seam. We're going to run a wider row of stitching across the base of that pocket now to encapsulate that raw edge. So lay the pocket nice and flat and flush against there and then bump up to 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and run a row of stitching across.
All right, so now I have my pocket attached to this panel and when I flip it down, my raw edge is completely hidden in that seam. Now remember, I want to create that lip there. So when I'm snapping this pocket, I can just slip my hand up underneath there. And I also need to bring this pocket down because it's way too close to the top. So I am just going to fold this pocket over so that it sits just below that first row of squares there. And I don't mind seeing some of those additional fabrics. So there's a lip that's about an inch, maybe an inch and a half under that pocket. And so I'll hold, I'm going to clip this and then I will hold that up at a side angle so you can see what's happening here. And you do want to make sure again that this is straight. So from the top, that pocket is four inches down. Okay, so that's what is happening here. There's a little pleat now at the base of this so that I can get my hand right under there. And what I wanna do now is stitch down both sides of this pocket to tack that down so nothing shifts. 3 eighths of an inch is fine. Okay, and now right now I have a nice gusseted pocket on this bag. You have the option if you want to leave that front pocket undivided. Because my rear pocket is undivided, I'm going to divide this one right up the middle and I can use that center seam there as my guide. So I'm going to run a row of stitching right down the center. And I did back stitch well at the top and the bottom of that pocket. And that's all there is to it to create this awesome lipped pocket for this bag. It feels so wonderful and my snaps are already in place. Now, when we craft the flap for this bag we will take great care to position the snaps on the flap so that they align nicely with the exterior i do not think we're going to have time to get to the flap today so we will uh, work on that as one of the last steps in this project so what we want to do now is use my modified T method to assemble the exterior of this bag. 
And so that involves positioning the side panels on the right and the left hand side of your front panel. And you may want to give some consideration to how your fabric is being placed. So here, that bird is going to be upside down. I don't love that, so I'm going to flip that over. And take another look. And that's pretty. And then here, I think I'm okay. I don't really have anything that's directional on that panel. And so I will use 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance to stitch down the right hand side and the left hand side and create my tri-folding panel. But I want to go ahead and prep my rear panel so I can stitch on the base as well. So you take the rear panel and position the base along the bottom of that panel. There are a lot of layers on this rear panel. So you're going to want to go nice and slow and make sure that you have everything captured in your seam allowance with that. I've got three layers of the foam going on, the fabric, a lot happening here. So use a nice, generous 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on that and go nice and slow. Okay, I have attached my side panels to the front body panel with the two-way pocket and I have attached my base panel to the rear panel with the full length pocket and the backpack tabs. Now I want to come in and trim away some of this excess here. I'm coming down to about three eighths of an inch there. Not much, just enough to minimize that bulk. And when I was stitching across the base, I did back stitch at those tabs so I could reinforce those as well. So give them a nice tug and make sure that they are secure. And that's looking great. That little fox is so sweet sitting right there. And then here's the front. Darlene. Okay, so now I have my tri-folding panel. I want to take my base panel, which is two part, and center that base on top of that tri-folding panel so that the base of each panel is aligned and centered. And I'm going to stitch seam to seam, which is different than end to end. So you're going to have to fit that up on the machine and back it in to the seam, not to the end. All right, and now I have what look 
looks like a big T. So here's the top of my T and here's the stem of my T. So I wanted to show you here, the seam allowance is open on the side of that and that's what's going to allow us to get that nice corner. So the next step of this process is to erase up that front panel and align the side of that base with the base of that side and stitch again seam to seam. great and I'm going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side. I'm aligning the base of the side with the side of the base and I'm only stitching seam to seam. is set and my corners look really good and I have the seam allowance free here on that edge because now I can raise up that remaining panel and align the sides so there's a lot of layers with the pocket and the foam so just take your time and you're going to use that generous 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to go ahead and align both of these now so I can peek inside and make sure that I'm satisfied with how that's going to line up. Okay, and now I just have to stitch from that base seam all the way up to the top. Okay, now you're definitely going to want to go in and check those seams and make sure that you have in fact captured all of those layers. It's an easy fix now if anything is close. And mine looks pretty good. I like to check on the inside as well. And then you can go ahead and trim up those seams. Timmy's having a little nightmare. Can you hear him? He's on the ground here having some kind of little adventure. Okay, dokie. So I have the entire exterior built. Now I want to reach inside and turn that right side out so we can see how it looks. This is another opportunity for you to make sure that you captured all those layers. 
pull on those seams a bit, put my hands in the pockets, put a little pressure on them, make sure that everything is secure because it's still an easy fix if anything is not captured in there. And look inside and it's just so fun. Oh my gosh, it's such a happy, truly happy-go-lucky backpack. All my favorites are in here and I absolutely love this lip under the pocket. Really awesome. So now the next step is to take this top edge and turn that over about an inch. Go ahead and get your clips in that so that can sit while you are preparing your panels for the interior. That's going to be your homework for this week. I want you to reference the PDF and cut out the remaining pattern pieces, which are all cut from yardage. And you can, of course, mix and match and use up your remnants, but you'll want those to be whole pieces. They will not be patchwork pieces. And then next week, we're going to meet to assemble the interior and craft the flap and the strap so that we can finish up this beautiful bag which I absolutely love the look darling all right well that was fun and we're making great progress with the project please let me know in the comments if this is your first patchwork bag and what you think of the process in general it's one of my favorite techniques it's so freeing and it's so exciting to watch the project come together I just want to give you a little quick side-by-side -side comparison of the two bags so far. They're similar just because I pulled from the same um, batch of fabric, but they're definitely different. I don't know if you have a clear favorite yet. Isn't that fun though? Oh, I just love this look. So just to review, your homework for this week is to cut out the remaining pattern pieces. You can reference the PDF for that. I'll put the link to my Etsy pattern shop down in the notes if you'd like to grab your own copy of the PDF. I will be creating a PDF for all of our Sew Togethers in 2022. There's going to be 11 of them in total. Please take this moment, if you haven't already done so, give the video a thumbs up and click subscribe and the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our So Fun Fridays. Until we meet again, as always, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. I'll see you next Friday, everybody. Thank you for sewing with me.